Bruchem Aboyim, thank you for coming. The topic tonight uh, for discussion will be um, on the fifth commandment in the Torah, uh, the Ten Commandments, honor your father and your mother. Now, when looking at the Ten Commandments, the Aserah Sedibrot, one may wonder, why is it that God would have to command us to honor our father and mother? After all, isn't it a natural feeling? We are taught that the first set of tablets of the Ten Commandments allude to God. Again, they're broken up five and five. And the second set of tablets allude to man. That being said, then why would the fifth commandment to honor your father and mother be on God's side of the commandments to really be on the side of man? Another question is, why is it that the Ten Commandments where the Torah uses the word kabed, honor, it places father before mother, and in the portion of Kedoshim, where the Torah uses the word tira'u, fear or reverence, then it places the mother before the father. So why the switch? What is interesting is that the Torah does not command us, does not command us to love our parents, only to honor and respect them. Yet in the first line of the Shema, we say, And you shall love the Lord your God. How can we be commanded to love God? After all, love is an emotion. The answer may well be that Adam, first man, did not have parents. His father, so to speak, was God Almighty himself. So Adam, first man, did not pass on to us, his descendants, a natural love for parents. He did, however, pass on to us, his descendants, a deep and natural love for God, his father. But do we really have a tangible feeling of love for God? The answer to that question is, not the way it existed initially. Before the destruction of the first temple, the feeling of love towards God was real and tangible. But so was the desire to serve idols. Much like a man who was in love with his wife and his mistress at the same time. This became the greatest challenge in life. Love God and serve him, or love idols and serve them. Now the greatest sages of the generation, the men of the great assembly, saw this challenge as too great for man to overcome, and as it had brought about the destruction of the first temple. So they fasted for three days, the Gemara says, and asked God to remove the desire for idol worship from the world. God agreed. And he gave them the key to idol worship. However, when they removed desire for idols from the world, they also removed the desire to love God from the world. Or at least, made it a feeling that one would have to look deeply within himself to connect with. Now, we do see that children have a deep love for parents. It's true. But that is more of what we call hakarata tov, gratitude, for the deep love that they shower upon us. It is easy to love someone who loves you complete, with complete and selfless love. Again, something that we inherited from Adam, first man, since he did have children. Not only man, but also animals, love and protect their children. In fact, we see that Noah saved his children from the flood, and yet no one compliments him for it, since it's a natural fact of nature. So why is the commandment to honor our parents on the first tablet, which deals with God, and not on the second tablet, which deals with man? There are three partners in the creation of a child, father, a mother, and God Almighty himself. And since we cannot give God his proper respect in this world, he tells us to give that honor and respect to the other two partners, our mother and father and he would consider it as if we honored and respected him. Now this concept goes so far as to make it a grave sin to hit or curse a parent. If one were to hit a parent and draw blood, even under the skin, the punishment is death by the Jewish court. Just by injury, not death. The same would hold true if one cursed one of his parents, even if that parent is deceased. If it's just a dead body and you hit, it's not a problem. But if a parent is even dead and you curse a parent, it can be a death penalty. So loving parents is logical, but not natural. So how do we understand this? 
There's a story told in the uh, Gemara, in the Talmud, in Kedushan 31a, about a young Gentile boy whose name was Dama ben Nasina. It happened that one of these stones that were in the breastplate of the high priest was lost and had to be replaced. Dama's father had the exact stone that the sages needed. And so they came to him to purchase the stone. They offered Dhamma a large amount of money for the stone, but he refused. So they offered him more money. He still refused. And finally, he told the sages that no matter how much money they would offer him, he could not sell the gem to them now because it was locked in a box. And the only key to that box was under his father's pillow. And his father was asleep, and he wouldn't wake him. And so the sages left and purchased the gem, gem from someone else. How did God Almighty repay Dhamma for his good deed of honoring his father? He blessed him with a para duma, a red heifer, something that is very rare and priceless. There have only been nine para dumas in all of history. When the sages came to Dhamma to buy this red heifer, they asked him how much money he wanted for the cow. And he answered, the same amount of money that they would have given him for the gem that he couldn't sell them before. The question is, God blessed Dhamma with a paraduma as a reward for his act of honoring his father. But why a paraduma? God could have blessed him in many other ways. There is a great lesson that God is teaching us. Honoring parents is one of the most logical mitzvot. On the other hand, the ritual of the Paraduma is the ultimate statute, a mitzvah, mitzvah without any logic. When the ritual is done, the Kohen who administers, to their, administers it to the person becomes unclean, and the person he administers to two becomes clean. The same act does the exact opposite to two people. This is to teach us that serving God has nothing, nothing to do with our logic. It is all based on God's logic which we, of course, cannot possibly understand. So we are taught to fulfill all of God's mitzvot, whether we understand them or not. Why? Just because they are Ratzon Hashem, the will of God. In the portion of Kedoshim 19.3, the Torah places the mother first with the word tiro, fear or reverence. And in the Ten Commandments, the Torah places the father first with the word kabed, to honor. Rashi states in Kedoshim that here it mentions the father before the mother, pardon me, the mother, pardon me, before the father, because it is evident before God Almighty that a son fears his father more than his mother. But regarding honor, it mentions the father before the mother, because it is evident before God that a son honors his mother more than his father, because she wins him over with favor and with kind words. So the question becomes, what is reverence? The son should not sit in his father's place, nor speak while he is speaking, nor contradict his words. And what constitutes honor? He should give him food and drink and provide him with clothes and shoes. He should bring him in and he should take him out. Now Rashi also mentions that the observance of Shabbat is placed next to the law of fearing one's father to inform us that even though the Torah has admonished you regarding fear of your father, if your father shall say to you, profane the Shabbat, do not listen to him. And similarly regarding all the other commandments of the Torah. Now the question becomes, why did Rashi choose to teach us this concept? By stating the one mitzvah of keeping the Shabbat. Why not some other mitzvah? And the answer given is that one who keeps the Shabbat is considered as if he has kept all the 613 commandments. The opposite is also true. If one desecrates the Shabbat, it is as if he has violated all the commandments in the Torah. Also, why is it the word tira'u, fear, or reverence, is, is in the plural? Because not only the child, but also the wife is obligated to show reverence to her husband. Now, one of the most powerful prayers that we recite is called the Avinu Malkenu, our father, our king. We recite this prayer on fast days and on special days of reverence, such as on Rosh Hashanah. Now the Talmud in Tainus 24b relates the following story of Rabbi Eliezer 
that there was a drought. Rabbi Eliezer led the congregation in 24 prayers in the hope that it would evoke God's mercy and they would bring rain. Rain did not come. So then Rabbi Akiva led the congregation in the prayer of Vinu Malkenu, our father, our king, and immediately the rains began to fall. We know that God Almighty is the king of the universe, but he is first and foremost our father in heaven. And just like a father, any father, man or animal, he loves us and is concerned for our well-being. In fact, when it talks about everything is in the hands of heaven except the fear of heaven. Most people say is us fearing God, fearing heaven, fearing punishment. I don't see it that way. There's a commentary that says is the fear that God has for us. The fear that a father has for a child. And as a king, we must show him proper reverence and follow protocol. Huh? But as a father, we can turn to him, even though we have not earned his concern because of the great love that he feels towards us, his children. We are taught that this world is a reflection of the world above. And just as we love our children, so too does God Almighty love us. We only have to reach out to him. He will always answer, though sometimes the answer will be no. So God is our true parent. He sends us into this world, and he gives us two adopted parents to care for us while we grow in this world. He expects us to treat these adopted individuals with honor and respect for all the hard work that they do for us while we are in this world. By showing honor and respect to our adopted parents, we make our Father in Heaven proud of us. And for that, we receive a great reward. May the day come quickly where we show honor and respect to our true Father in Heaven with the coming of Mashiach Sukenu quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for coming. God bless. Shabbat Shalom. Honor your parents. Give them a call.